Hello, I'm going to introduce you to some of the equipment that we're going to look at in this lab. So we're going to look at the oscilloscope, um, function generator, and then later uh, power supply. So hopefully you've used some of these already. Um, but this is just a really quick intro to what, what the lab's looking at. So uh, the lab itself, basically, there's a few parts to it. So in the first part, we'll build just a really simple circuit that can be built either um, with a breadboard or um, just even on the, the lab bench itself if you... If you need, so um, you can get some of the parts that will in it will either be provided. So we're just going to build this simple circuit here. Um, and I'm just going to dump out some from the lab kit here. Uh, what you're going to need is, um, so you're going to need some resistors um, and a capacitor. And depending whether you use the ones from your kit or provided ones, um, initially, so here's a, a two point, this looks like 2.2K, so you can see... Uh, red, red, red. So that's 2.2K. What we're looking for is a 1K. So this will be brown, black, uh, red here. And we'll use like a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Um, so this is all we really need. It's, it, this is a really basic lab just to confirm so, some of the uh, tool setup stuff. So the first thing you're going to look at is the function generator here. Um, so uh, this function generator can be used to generate waveforms um, and anything like that. So the output of the function generator, we'll turn it on here, um, basically goes to a uh, two different prongs. Um, and you may or may not have this, this uh, adapter on the output. So this adapter just splits it so you can have two things on the output. Um, and the output uses what's called these BNC connectors here. So um, I'm going to leave that on because normally it's there. Uh, to get the output, you'll need, so we'll need something to make this a little easier. So over to the side here, um, there's some various uh, probes. What we want is one like this. So this probe here uh, basically goes from BNC to two little pins. So these pins can be inserted into a breadboard, um, or as we'll see, we can just build a, a little circuit with them if you don't have a breadboard. So um, I'm going to attach the output. So this just goes on here. And it fits in, and what you should see is basically, uh, if you look at the side here, you can push down, and it should clip. So that's how you know you've made a good connection with a BNC connector, um, and then you get two leads at the output here. Okay, um, so all the function generators will have a similar functionality. They'll actually be a little bit different. Um, what we have here is so here's a main screen where we can set a frequency that we're running. Uh, there's normally a way to set an amplitude, so here it's 100 millivolts peak to peak, so this is from uh, top to bottom. You'll notice if I if I switch, there's different ways of specifying the voltage, so here it's specifying a high and a low voltage, so you know plus 50 millivolts to minus 50 millivolts is equivalent to 100 millivolts peak to peak. Um, so we're going to start with like 2 volts peak to peak, so 2 VPP um, as our setting. Um, now this isn't actually on yet, and we're going to use a sine wave. You can see you can switch between. Um, the final thing we often have to do is you'll notice up at the top here, there's a little output off. Um, so there's an output button that you can hit, and this will give us a uh, an output onto the pin. So there's now a voltage on the pin. There's one little trick I really want to emphasize, because you're going to see this right away. Um, that's that most of these... Uh, voltages will actually be not correct when you look on the scope because they actually assume there's a resistor on the op output here, a 50 ohm resistor. So we can look really quickly at, at where that comes from, but it's really important to check the voltages, um, especially if you're putting this into something digital. So to check the voltages, what we want to do is we want to use a handy oscilloscope. So there's a few different types of oscilloscopes. This is one type um, in the lab. And basically we turn it on. And then we're going to connect a, uh, a probe into it. So um, the probes themselves will typically be, so they should always be, you know, in front like this, removed from the scope um, and replaced as such. Uh, the probe itself, so you'll notice on the probe body, it's going to say something about this 10 to 1. Let me put it right side up for you. Um, 10 to 1 passive probe. 10 to 1 means there's a, the input voltage to the oscilloscope is divided um, it's one tenth of the actual voltage, and they do this to reduce some of the uh, effects of this the probe going into the circuit. So, um, how we attach it? It's similar to the BNC, so it goes here. And then I'm just going to carefully, very carefully rotate the top to mate it. So it should all be done 
very um, gently, right? This is uh, test equipment and there's some oscilloscopes can be incredibly expensive. So you wanna get in the habit of being very gentle. And then you have your probe here with a positive um, and a ground clip. So we're just gonna connect the positive uh, to this and then connect the ground clip to the ground. And if we look back in our scope, we don't see anything. So we have this, we have the output on, why is there nothing? And why is there nothing is because probably we have some um, incorrect setting somewhere, or actually in this case, I clipped it wrong. So don't try to record at the same time. Okay, so actually now we do get a nice uh, waveform. So you might not get this right away. Um, what you can have to do is, so there's channel buttons, so you wanna make sure when you get your scope, check everything's on, so channel one. Um, you can hit this, there's a few buttons at the top that can help you really quickly. So default setup returns everything to some default. Auto setup tries to automatically scale stuff. It, it tends to sometimes work, sometimes not. Um, I encourage you to get in the habit of really f uh, playing with the scope features to, to see your waveform. So the first thing typically is to adjust the um, channel sensitivity. So what this is doing is this is adjusting in the corner here, this volt per division. So you can see as I scale it, and this is changing um, what one division of the scope looks like. So we have that setting. The other setting up here is the horizontal. Um, so you wanna adjust that. And this is gonna adjust uh, the horizontal scale as well. So we can get a nice sine wave up on the scope. Um, if we want to measure stuff, we can use other features of the scope. So there's a cursors feature up here. Um, so we can use this to measure some of the uh, the cursors. And how this works is that you can push to select um, either, where'd this go? Uh, where'd the cursors? So cursors. And then normally, okay, cursor mode. So I'm going to say manual. So if it's manual, it means I'm just manually adjusting uh, the cursor, and then I press this other one over here to select which cursor I'm adjusting. Um, so for example, I could say let's measure the, the high voltage, and let's measure the low voltage. Um, there we go. So you can see the low voltage is actually at minus two volts, and the high voltage is at plus plus two, and the delta is actually uh, four volts. So why is that? You know, I specified a two volt peak to peak. Um, and this is actually pretty common. So the issue is that this, again, assumes you have 50 ohms on the output. Uh, you'll see some function generators have a, a mode that switches between assuming you have 50 ohms or not. When you don't have 50 ohms, you basically get double the voltage. So this is a very, very common thing to see, and it's important to remember as you go to use these so you don't blow up something. Um, so that's not super interesting because this is just a, uh, you know, this is just a voltage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and try building this little circuit here. Um, so if we go back, you know, we're going to have a resistor. So I'm going to do it on the breadboard first and then show you how you could skip the breadboard fully. And capacitor. Boom, there you go, amazing. Um, now we're gonna take our scope and this is gonna be the input. This is gonna be ground. This is the input. And again, you know, breadboards, it's all connected in that one row. So we have um, something like that. So again, that remember each of these rows is connected together um, and there we have our system. So that looks as we anticipate. What we want to see is let's see the output of this circuit here. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get a second scope probe, plug it in. So again, sort of gently plug that in. Um, take this output and connect it to the output. So if you look back at your circuit, you know, remember what we have is this. Um, so we have the capacitor output here is what we want to measure. So we're measuring the output on the capacitor. And we could have a little ground lead. So these grounds, remember the scope probe, ground leads are actually connected together. So 
whether or not you want them to be, these are electrically connected. So if you're using two channels, you cannot try to have different ground potentials. It'll create a, a short circuit through the scope body, which is very bad. Um, you should have them connected together for electrical reasons. So let me turn on channel two here first. So you turn on channel two, we get our second waveform. Um, and you can see, for example, I can unplug this ground and you still get the same waveform. So at higher frequencies, uh, it helps a lot. At lower frequencies, it doesn't really matter. So we'll connect that in and we get this. Um, now what you need to do is, you know, these two waveforms look different and it's because it's a filter output. But you also notice that the scales are different for channel one and channel two. So we probably want those scales to be the same so we can more accurately see what the input and output looks like. Um, so, you know, now we have a more accurate representation of the, the signal going through that filter. So if you want, you could try actually changing, you know, for example, it's a filter, so you could increase the frequency. We could look at the difference between 11 kilohertz input and output in 10. And you can see that it's just attenuating it quite substantially. So um, you can see this is working roughly as you anticipate. Now, uh, the other thing you can do is to, to, to move the waveforms. What we can do is we have this position of one and two, so we can actually move one and two up and down. Um, so you can experiment a bit with that to get a feel for for usage of an oscilloscope, because we're going to be using this quite a bit uh, in the course. All right, so that's a, uh, a simple circuit. Now, as a quick side note, if you don't have a breadboard yet, not a problem. Um, you can basically build your circuit in the air. This, this lab's basic enough, and to do that, all we do is we have no breadboard, um, right? So here's the input. Here's um, la the, I forgot to bring a phone holder, so I'm sorry it's so shaky here. Um, here's the output. And now all we need to do is try to get our input into this and our output in uh, to there. So I'm just gonna clip these in um, and we'll take a look at um, how that works once I, I clip them together here. So, so all I'm doing is clipping in the, the leads to where uh, you expect to see them. So now what it looks like is this, right? So I have the input. Um, this is again going to a scope, resistor. This is the output here. Um, and we get the exact same thing. So, and again, we could go up a notch in frequency and see our filter responding. Um, so there you go. So that's kind of all that's expected is to be able to get uh, a waveform up to, to show some measurements on it uh, and you'll get that checked off. So that's part, um, the first part of just a basic lab uh, introduction. Um, the second thing you'll do is take a look at the, um, the power supply, so this is a pretty standard lab power supply here. Uh, what you have, so just some quick notes of it, right? So it's two channels. Um, you'll notice, so there's a, it says like here, five volt, 10 volt. That's just some suggested standard voltages. You'll notice that you can basically adjust the voltage. And this is a, a, a kind of old school analog one. Um, you know, I think most of them in the lab are this style, but you'll see lots of digital supplies and stuff. Um, the one really important thing to realize is that these two channels are isolated, so there's no electrical connection between this channel and this channel unless you want it. Um, this ground here, so this is a bit of a, a misnomer if, if you're used to, you know, ground being zero volts. This is actually earth ground, so this connects uh, the chassis to the earth ground. Um, what we're doing is we're basically between plus and minus, there's whatever voltage we dial in here. So we can dial in say five volts, let's set this as it expects, and we could dial in say 10 volts there. Um, now the lab's expecting a different voltage, uh, so you can, you can follow that along. And to get a positive and negative voltage, so for example from here to, he if you try to just measure from here to here, you won't actually get a uh, correct voltage. So you can use the meter um, up here Right, and let's just try that real quick. And we say this is uh, a bench meter here. So what we'll do is we'll plug in um, the bench meter. So again, we're using the voltage common um, here. So this is how we're always doing a voltage measurement. 
right? And we'll check the scale. So this is saying it's going up to 200, so that's fine. We could even use the 20 scale if you want, but um, so, you know, if I measure there, that's exactly what you expect, 10 volts. But if I try to measure, say, between these two channels, uh, we don't get any voltage. So this is the two, the two negatives. That's exactly what you expect. But if I go from zero to uh, negative to positive, there's also no voltage. And that's because there's no electrical connection. So we always need to connect these with little jumper wires if you want um, to use both channels. So if I'm, I'm using, for example, a positive and a negative, it's not uncommon to, to have circuits that need positive and negative voltage. We have to wire together like this. So this positive goes to this negative. And now what that means is that say between this channel here and this channel here, I'm actually gonna get a, uh, a negative voltage. So there's negative 10 volts. But now between here and here, I get positive five volts. Um, so, you know, so again, we're just gonna do some basic experiments with the, the lab power supply. And if you follow along with the lab, um, all you need to do is build a little voltage divider. Um, so again, if you have a breadboard, uh, you can build it on that, but it's not necessary because you can do the same sort of uh, free air building. Um, but that's all that's involved in this lab is just a quick introduction to some of the, the you know, lab gear here, here in the basic electronics lab at Dow.